Before now, only in movies or video games could most people experience a bird's eye view or race through obstacles at breakneck speeds. Today, through first person view drone racing, the pilot can see the entire race from the drone's perspective. Flying a drone competitively at high speed is an intense, immersive experience and it's on its way to becoming the sport of the future. I feel that it's really cool because you're like inside it and it's like Star Wars, like you're flying through obstacles and you're going through gates and it's just a really cool experience. FAV stands for, for First Person View. What it means is you actually get to see what the drone is seeing when it's flying. For example, we have this drone that has a built-in camera. With this, it transmits a video to an iPad or a pair of goggles through an antenna or its own receiver built in through the iPad under either 2.4 frequency or 5.8 frequency. For racing drones, they are using 2.4 and soon to be digital at 5.8. A racing drone is a small quadcopter that is built specifically to compete in FPV racing events which are held in most major cities around the world. Main rigs are usually a four or a five inch quad like one of these. Um, this is my Predator racing quad. Um, so most four or five inch quads that do about 80 to 100 miles an hour flying big fast tracks are what we do mainly. We travel around uh, Las Vegas, Northern California, Florida, the championship for MultiGP this year is gonna be in uh, Las Vegas. The drone requirements are basic. They're max of six inch, uh, which is prop to prop. Right now it is 4S batteries, and it's just a basic hand-built or store-bought quad that you can fly, uh, more of an open class. Just like in other forms of competitive flying, drone racers are constantly looking for new gear and tweaks that will give them an edge. Modding or customizing a drone is quite common in drone racing because drone technology is advancing very quickly. FPV pilots have their choice of participating in three different types of races. Rotocross. The multi-rotors race through a course and are ranked in the order they cross the finish line. The drag race is a straight line race between two or more drones over a short distance. Time trials test how fast a drone can make it through the course. The most common uh, race types are mainly points. It's one point per lap, and after that, it's just a uh, bring over from other types of racing like RC truck racing. The racetrack can be laid out using gates, hoops, flags, and poles. MultiGP, one of the top drone racing leagues in the world, created the universal time trial tracks, allowing FPV pilots to compete against each other across the world by providing standardized local courses partnered with the global leaderboard. UTT is something MultiGP came up, it's Universal Time Trials. It's a way for your local club to compete by a time on the same track throughout the United States without having to be in the same location. Pilots attend their local MultiGP chapter to participate and receive official results, which are then entered into the MultiGP leaderboard by their chapter organizer. Yeah, MultiGP 2017 Regional Qualifier is a way for organizations like Bakersfield Multirotor and Oxnard and LA to get together and compete against more than just the friends and family in the areas. They can go beyond in the regional areas and compete against other drone pilots to get into the final and into the championship. Some of the biggest and baddest races are so challenging that some very complicated maneuvers are needed just to get through the track. The biggest factor, I think, that will make a drone faster than another will be the pilot. Depending on how much experience he has with the equipment, he could easily take out anyone who has the most expensive drone in the market. Drone racing seems to be one of very few sports that people from a wide range of ages can compete together at a professional level. I think to become a professional drone racer, you have to have a big commitment to flying almost every day and just doing a lot of practice, and then getting a sponsor would be a big step to that. The drone racing community is growing rapidly as the sport gains popularity. There are plenty of local user groups, FPV meetups, and similar events happening in most US and European cities. The main purpose of a meetup is for the racers to share the latest information and to learn from each other. So I'm Drobot Racer's father, and 
I'm his, uh, his tech guy, and it's been a really exciting time for us to just hang out, you know? We get to spend so much time working on a craft, and we're flying drones, we're outside, we're competing. Um, it's, a, it's a lot of fun. It's a great bonding experience to, to do with a kid, with your, with your own child. Uh, Bakersfield Multirotor was created just because when I was looking to get into drones, I wanted to do photography drones. And then I noticed on YouTube there was racing drones and we want we want to do have more fun. And I was by myself and I was like, there's got to be guys to want to fly. So I started Bakersfield Multirotor in the first six months. I pretty much flew by myself until I started meeting other gentlemen to where the part we're at right now. Unlike other racing leagues where all the, it's all about themselves and winning, everybody here looks looks out for each other. Today, the world is witnessing the first generation of drone racers, sports fans, and pilots taking their video game skills into the real world. We can see the action, the excitement, the unique experience, and the people supporting it. Drone racing keeps proving itself to be the sport of the future. Oh, this drone racing has exploded. And that's why we had to get our feet wet and get our involvement going because we wanted to be a part of it. The future of drone racing is uh, is super exciting. I mean, this is just the birth of it, and it, it can just, it's really blowing up right now. 